Greetings, citizens from the rolling hills of the bluegrass. Just wanted to share another one of these poorly made uh, symbols that I've come up with. But it's that everyone else gets a flag. <laughs> you know, everyone else gets something they can wave or they can make into a placard and walk around and say, this is what I believe. And you, you, you want to have something that kind of completely encompasses everything that you kind of believe in that's the whole point of the sloganeer you know it'll, you know hope and change and make america great again and you know not one more time those kinds of things is that it's supposed to create a holistic view of the core tenets of your beliefs and above all if you're of the liberty mindset i think no matter where it comes from Totalitarianism, authoritarianism, whichever version of the word meaning one people rule, should be opposed, no matter from what angle it comes from, from whoever, whether it's coming from a religious organization or a secular organization or a corporation, it should be opposed if you believe in each individual being the captain of their own ship then authoritarianism has many many angles at which it can attack you from and we, we have to remember that that all government effectively is an oligarchy because for the simple fact that you're a human being and you're not going to live forever so you're going to need to gather to you people of a like-minded idea that once you're gone, you have some hope that they're going to continue what you're doing, right? Ideological um, brothers and sisters and children, right? They're, they're the, the, the idea offspring. You hope that they're going to at least carry on at maybe at least the core ideas Maybe not every little spur that comes off of it, but at least the core ideas will perpetuate past your death. And then the other thing is that you need those people to go out and effectively politically proselytize, ideologically proselytize for you. To get more people to come into your side to come over here hey we believe in this we believe in this what do you believe ah here's an idea here's something here's an opposite idea have you thought about that you know to go out and actually talk to people to be in the forefront of the debates so you need people to come in and go out and that's where that oligarchy element it's a it's a group of few going out to rule the many and this is how all governments work. And the last and final thing, as a human being, you need to sleep at some point. <laughs> you need to recharge your batteries. And you can't do that if you're surrounded by people you don't trust. You're not going to be able to have a restful sleep if you're surrounded by people that you doubt all the time. And this is where that, that fun working of the oligarch comes in and they're able to twist and turn people back on themselves and make them paranoid. They, they, they tear, turn paranoia into a wonderful tool so that instead of themselves being paranoid, they make their underlings paranoid of one another or the outside. And so you're an oligarch, you've created your, your hive in the middle, and from there they go out. And then you gain power because they've gone out and they've spread these ideas and people have rallied to you. Well, now you have power, now you start to make the inroads that you've wanted to make, that your ideology has pushed for the entire time. And if there are any roadblocks in the way, you quickly sweep them aside so that the flow of ideas can go further and further out and have more and more of a, 
ideological effect, but then the actual tangible real world effects that you really want to occur. So it pushes out further and further, and then people come to the streets, the ones who didn't pay attention, who weren't listening, and who disagreed with you, and say, wait a second, who put you in charge? And they come out with their flags and their banners. And the most direct example of it's going to be the people who are your ideological opposites. But in the mix, there are people who love liberty, who love freedom. And they look at you and they go, okay, well, you're doing bad things. Definitely don't want to support you. And then they look over at your opposition and they're like, I, I don't really like you either. You, you're, you're going to do the same thing that they're doing, but in your way. And um, I, I just disagree, right? It's A and B. Option A, option B. And those people over here are going, well, what about C? The A and B go, there is no C. And you go, ah, I, I disagree. There's always a C option. And it's whatever is not either of you. You tyrants. You are A and B. But the rest of us over here are like, no, we're out. We're good. We're good. But we don't have anything that we can wave. <laughs> Right, we, we have lots of symposiums and lots of things where you can get out there and, um, you know, talk and listen to lectures. And it's all very academic and very fun if you're a super nerd. But for the regular person who's like, no, I believe in liberty, engaging in academic stuff is fine, but we still need to get bodies out into the field. To show that, hey, there are people out there that believe that there's always a third option. And in ways, we need something to wave. We need something to symbolize, hey, we're over here. We believe these things. So I, I sat down and I came up with the anti-authoritarian flag which is probably other variations of it elsewhere. And I also was like trying to come up with some play on Antifa, right? And I, I thought, okay, so you have anti-toto, which is anti-totalitarian, but it doesn't flow off the tongue all that well. And then you have anti-auth, which is pretty good. That's anti-authoritarian. And it kind of has this Antioch kind of a sound to it. So thought Antioch might be a little bit closer, but you know, who really cares about the naming of it? It's the symbol that it represents. But you've got freedom, which is the core of all of it. If you are not free to be who you are, to live this life that you have in freedom, without interference from anyone from, from the outside, without your request, then pretty much everything else we discuss is is just it's it's moot because it immediately stops. Am I free to do as I wish as long as I do not harm other people? No. Well, then what's the point of having any further discussion? We need to discuss freedom first. And then the next little pennant, uh, pennant is liberty, and I I think of liberty more as the actual action of being free. I am free, so therefore I may now be at liberty to do things in accordance with other people that voluntarily join me. And that's where volition comes in. Now you could put choice, but choice in some terms, like especially the, the abortion area, if you put choice immediately, people go there. And I'm meaning a choice in a greater area of ideal. That I get to choose the things that I do with people. I'm not forced into any kind of, um, well, I guess, social contract, maybe, I guess. But the, the contracts that are formed are formed by choice, not by force. Or just by the very fact of you being in a general geographic location. 
So you have freedom, liberty, volition slash choice, and peace. And all three of these together form, I guess, the, um, the tetriarchy of my version of libertarianism. Because if I am free to do, free to act, and make choices, those that are around me can live in peace, knowing that I am not going to aggress against them, and I can live in peace, knowing that they will not aggress against me. And then if you, you know, look at the symbols, you of course have the Nazis and the general socialists and the general communist symbol. And then you have the fascists over here on the bottom, which is the fasci, right? The, the um, uh, symbol of the lectors from the Roman Empire with the hatchet and the bundle of sticks and the rope. The, it's, it's one of the less talked about things, but it's the rope that ties them together. That's the most pernicious part of the symbol. You would think it would be the axe head, right? But that's the power, but it's the rope that forces all of us together. That's a very subtle, <laughs> subtle representation of authoritarianism, is that we are all bundled together and we are forced on by powers from above, which is the axe head. And then in the center, is the oldest uh, form of oligarchy that humanity's ever known, which is um, monarchies. Whether it's a, a constitutional one or a, um, a theocratic one, monarchies are the root of a lot of this. Because what are the monarchies? Well, they're, they're the biggest person in the group. And then they have underlings that will support them. They're the king's men. And in some instances, the queen's men. So I think this is pretty, pretty straightforward. It opposes all of the general ideas of authoritarianism that we have. And it's, uh, again, it's something, take it, go. Make these, actually hang them from your car. You know, do something with it. Get it out there that you're opposed to all forms of authoritarianism, wherever they come from. Because in the end, a tyrant is a tyrant. It doesn't matter their ideology. The fact that they believe you are their property and they have the right and the power to do to you as you wish, it doesn't matter that they believe in socialized medicine or um, uh, kleptocracy or um, um, what is it? Um, cacistocracy, you know, the rule by the most unqualified. It doesn't matter because in the end, it's all just tyranny. <laughs>